All right. A very good evening to all of you. Welcome to another video. So, turns out that the audio of the camera was at fault. Okay, the microphone is absolutely fine. There is some problem with the camera. So, I think it will take a couple of days or maybe I don't know how long it will take for this camera to get fine. Till the time, please bear with the audio. Right. Today, we are going to continue our discussion on ring opening of epoxides. Earlier, we had talked about how the Foose Platner rule is responsible in case of cyclic six-membered. Um, you know, epoxides, cyclic epoxides where six member ring is there, like uh, how the ring opening takes place, that how the Foose Platner rule governs what will be the stereochemistry or where the what will be the ratio selectivity of the epoxide, like where the ring opening will take place, right? But now, if I talk about epoxides in general, okay, they do have a lot of um, different ways to react, okay, that is why you will see in a lot of entrance exams. There are so many questions uh, based on epoxides. Okay, um, like every year in CSR at least there is one question based on epoxides. Either it will be related to the synthesis or it could be related to the ring opening. Mostly you will see the ring opening of epoxides because when so once we talk about unsymmetrical epoxides, there is always uh, uh, there are two principles which govern where the, how the ring opening will take place. Whether it will take place from the uh, more hindered side or the less hindered side, right? So we'll just look into those parameters. Now all of you know that if we have simple epoxide, okay, if we have a simple epoxide, then obviously if we have any nucleophile, that nucleophile can come and you know lead to ring opening of the epoxide. And what product we will get? We will basically get nucleophile attached and then it will form this. Okay, this will be the product. Sorry, this won't be there. So this will be the product, right? So this is the simple SN2 reaction will take place and the epoxide ring opening will take place. But now what I do is if I make this epoxide somehow unsymmetrical, okay, let's say I substitute two methyl groups over here. Now this is where the question would be question would arise. Now if I add a nucleophile, okay, now if I add a nucleophile, then what is gonna happen? Now if I add a nucleophile over here, the nucleophile can either interact and attack this less hindered side or the nucleophile can attack the more hindered side. So these are the two possibilities and we will get a different product because the epoxide now is unsymmetrical. Now this actually depends upon the conditions. Okay. Now generally a nucleophile will always prefer to attack the less hindered side. Okay. So if I show it to you by a different color, this is the less hindered side, right? This one over here is the less hindered side. So it will always like to attack the less hindered side. That is the general tendency of any nucleophile. It will try and attack the less hindered side. Okay. Now please remember two conditions. Okay. One is acidic. Okay. One is acidic, and the other condition is basic. Now the thing to remember is that in basic conditions, the nucleophile will have its normal tendency of attacking the less hindered side. Okay, in basic conditions, it will have its normal tendency to attack the less hindered side. But in acidic conditions, there comes a problem. Okay, in acidic conditions, what happens is first this oxygen will get protonated. Okay, so if I do the reaction in acidic conditions, so in acidic conditions, what will happen is first this epoxide will get protonated. Okay, this oxygen will get protonated and will form like a positive charge up will be generated on this oxygen. Now because there is a positive charge generated on this oxygen, there will be a transition state generated where the positive charge will be generated on this carbon. Okay, like positive charge will be generated on this carbon also and the positive charge will be generated on this carbon also in the transition state. Okay, so what it will lead to is, see if you compare this positive charge and this positive charge, over here there are two methyl groups which are stabilizing this positive charge. Okay, so there is a positive or cationic intermediate that is formed. And this cationic, I am not sure whether it is a transition state or intermediate, I think it is a transition state. So whatever this cationic, I think intermediate sorry. So, but, so if once we have this cationic intermediate generated, what is going to happen is, this positive charge on this particular carbon will be more stabilized due to the inductive effect. Okay, it depends on what substituents we have. But if right, right now for this example, we have methyl substituent. So both the methyl substituents will stabilize this intermediate. Okay, so because this uh, transfer state or intermediate is getting stabilized, what is going to happen is that the nucleophile will, since you know nucleophile is what? It, it will try and attack the more electrophilic center. So since the positive charge over here is getting stabilized, okay, the positive charge over here is getting stabilized, the nucleophile in acidic conditions will prefer to attack the more hindered site because of the stabilization of the transfer state. That once the nucleophile approaches this carbon, the positive transition state will get stabilized. Okay, you have to also imagine this nucleophile is approaching this carbon. 
so this complete transition state will be stabilized by the presence of the methyl groups okay so in acidic this is also sometimes referred to as the loose sn2 transition state okay sometimes it is also referred as loose sn2 transition state okay loose sn2 transition state okay ps i write okay loose sn2 ps okay sometimes it is also referred to as loose sn2 transition state so this is what happens that in acidic conditions the reducibility kind of changes okay but uh, when we talk about the ring opening of epoxide it is quite tricky this is a very basic notion that in basic conditions it will undergo from the less hindered side and the acidic con acidic conditions it will go from the more hindered side okay this is the basic notion not the more hindered side basically the one which will be more stabilized where the cationic uh, transition state will be more stabilized okay so this is the basic notion but like i said the nucleophile will always have the tendency to uh, undergo ring opening from the less hindered side okay the nucleophile will always have the tendency to undergo ring opening or the epoxide will always have this tendency um, to undergo ring opening from the less hindered side okay so sometimes it happens i have seen some examples also in literature where even in acidic conditions the uh, nucleophile is attacking from the less hindered side but i think if they ask you from an exam point of view they will not ask you such a tricky question okay so for 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 exam purposes you should know that in acidic conditions it will lead to attack from the a uh, side where the transition state is more uh, cationic transition state is more stabilized which will mostly be the uh, more hindered side okay and in basic conditions it will attack from the less hindered side so this is the basics uh, or you can say the basic of the ring opening of epoxides right now the question is what kind of questions come so we we'll discussed two or three questions that will give you an idea as to how you need to solve those questions because this is the very basic part of epoxide right but in csr you know some advanced questions also come so we we'll look into those questions now one important part that i would like to take is compound for epichlorohydrin okay this is the compound epichlorohydrin okay it's called epichlorohydrin now what uh, the scientists did was they added a nucleophile okay and when they added the nucleophile what product they got so when they added the nucleophile the product obtained was this okay there we go side right this is the this is the this is the product now it looks like that a simple sn2 reaction has taken place okay it looks like a simple sn2 reaction has taken place where this ch2cl has been replaced by the nucleophile right so it looks like it's a simple sn2 transition state but what actually happens is that this nucleophile actually attacks this carbon okay it attacks this carbon once the attack takes place this bond forms okay this 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 bond forms between the nucleophile and the carbon and this forms o minus and now this o minus attacks this carbon and the chloride leaves okay so this is the mechanism now two things you might be curious about first of all why the nucleophile did not show simple sn2 substitution why did it attack the epoxide the reason is the three member ring is highly sterically strained okay sorry it is uh, it is very strained not sterically strained it is very strained okay three member ring secondly this carbon is more electrophilic okay the less hindered carbon on this side on the in the epoxide is is less hindered and is more electrophilic as compared to this ch carbon to which the chloride is attached so that is why because of these two reasons because of the strain and because of the electrophilicity of the epoxide okay this carbon the nucleophile selectively attacks the, the epoxide carbon okay not the ch2 cl carbon right so that is why it is attacking over here it forms o minus and then this o minus attacks the ch2 so you get this product so it might look like a simple sn2 substitution but that is not actually the actually the mechanism now let's look at the questions right so i've taken two questions uh, one is from june 2016 and the other one is from december 2019 examination right now uh, like both the questions um, there are many other questions actually but i have just taken these two to uh, give you an idea about how to utilize this concept there are many other questions that you can do by yourself and in case you have any doubt you can let me know in the comment section if i get the time i'll definitely answer it right so let's look at this question from december 2016 now there are two important concepts that we utilize over here for the first concept is actually related to asymmetric synthesis so this is a chiral auxiliary okay so this is a chiral auxiliary and when you are adding a base like sodium hexamethyl disilazide when you are adding a base what is going to happen is the base is going to abstract the most acidic proton so this is the auxiliary over here and you can see that the auxiliary over here the isopropyl group is below the plane so this is the role of the auxiliary that will lead to asymmetric synthesis because this auxiliary has this isopropyl group below the plane so when we add this sodium hexamethyl hexamethyl that is we add the base 
the base will abstract the most acidic proton which is over here okay so it is going to abstract the most acidic proton which is over here and will generate a carbon ion which is going to be stabilized all right now once or a enone basically once this carbon ion is stable uh, is generated this is going to attack either this end of the epoxy or this end of the epoxy right so over here we have a ots group and over here i have a epoxy so i told you that the epoxy are generally more electrophilic okay right? so the same thing will happen this carbon ion is going to attack the this carbon the electrophilic carbon so the ring opening will take place it will form o minus and then this o minus will then attack this carbon over here so what will be the product that will be generated the product will look something like this so we'll have the auxiliary i'll just write the o o u x over here the auxiliary and along with the auxiliary we'll have this above the plane like i said because of the isopropyl group present below the plane the, this uh, formation will take place from above the plane so that is the role of this chiral auxiliary right so once you get this above the plane so this is so let's say this is this carbon then the second carbon is this okay and then we have a epoxide generated over here right so uh, the epoxide is generated over here right? okay so this is going to be product right so to this carbon we have this carbon attached 1 2 3 so 1 Two, three, and between two and three carbon, we have the epoxide formed. So it was an easy question for four marks. There were two important points. First, of, first was the uh, chiral auxiliary, and the second was you had you had to identify where the attack is going to take place. Whether it is going to going to lead to ring opening of the epoxide, or whether it is going to attack this particular carbon over here. So please remember that whenever you have uh, these kind of substituents present, like this, you can say it's kind of like a bichlorohydrate, right? Kind of like there's a good leaving group attached over here, right? So it is going to behave in the similar way. right but now look at the next question the next question is very interesting this question is from december 2019 and the important part is okay i don't know where i have kept the um one second yeah sorry so the important part is that this question that is in december 2019 very similar question was also asked in june 2019 so for your convenience or for your practice please go ahead and do that question from june 2019 for four marks there is a question uh, which was asked on a very similar concept so had you understood that question in june 2019 this question would have been very easy for you to solve right so what have they given us they have given a diethyl okay and to this diethyl we are adding butyl lithium at minus 70 degree celsius in presence of a epichlorohydrin derivative okay so this is the epichlorohydrin derivative so we are adding this and they are asking what is the product when these are the conditions when we are adding this epichlorohydrin derivative uh, at minus 70 degree celsius in presence of butyl lithium and then we are adding hgcl2 okay and the second part of the question is what will happen if we add the same reagents but instead of this epichlorohydrin derivative we add this compound so what will be the product so now the first thing that we need to identify is that when you add butyl lithium in presence of at minus 70 degree celsius the first thing that is going to happen is the deprotonation will take place over here okay this this hydrogen is comparatively uh, acidic Okay, so this hydrogen, one of the two hydrogens, will be abstracted, and we'll get a carbon ion generated over here. Right? Now this carbon ion can either attack this carbon or it can attack this carbon. Okay. Now you know all, all of you know what is going to happen. It is going to attack this carbon because it is a what do you call? It is um, um, like it is more electrophilic, right? So it is going to attack this carbon over here. So once that attack takes place, what we'll get? Cl, and then this epoxide will open up. Okay, first first it will open up, then it will again attack, right? So we can write down over here O minus, then this carbon, and then to this carbon we have the diethyl attached. Okay, okay, fine. Now next what is going to happen is this O minus is going to attack over here. Okay, so what we get? We get the epoxide, right? And then we have this, and then we have the diethyl. Okay, then we have the diethyl. Uh, okay, right. All right. Now the next thing is, what is going to happen? We are adding HgCl. So you know that uh, sulfurs are also called mercaptans because they have very strong affinity towards HgCl2 or uh, mercury. So in the presence of HgCl2, this diethyl will be deprotonated. So it is actually like a masking agent. Okay. If you have studied about uh, retrosynthesis, you know that this is a masking agent. So when we add when we add HgCl2, it will convert into a carbonyl, or in this case, it will convert it into an aldehyde. If we have a methyl substituent over here, okay. Instead of simple this, if we have a methyl substituent over here like this, so then when once the proton is abstracted, we will get a carbon ion, and then we will have a methyl over here. So once you add HgCl2, what you get is a ketone, 
and if you have methyl group present over here, what you will get over here is a ketone. Okay, you will get a ketone over here. Right? But since we have been given a simple diethyl, since we have been given a simple diethyl, so this methyl group will not come and we will get an aldehyde. Right? So in this case, we got a simple aldehyde. Now the same thing, what you have to do now is, instead of this epiclorohydrate, now what is given to us? Now it is given to us this compound. Okay. Now over here also similar thing can happen that this minus will at first it will attack the uh, electrophilic carbon of the epoxide. It will lead to ring opening. But now if you see, it will form one, two, three, four membered ring. And four membered ring, you know, it is not kinetically feasible also, not favorable. Thermodynamically also, it is very unfavorable, right? So it will not form a four membered ring. So now what is the case? So if it attacks over here, it will form a simple alcohol. It can attack simply this carbon and give SN2 substitution. Okay, the carbon is attached to bromide. Now you might question me that I just told you that it will not uh, attack the um, carbon to which a halogen is attached because it is not as electrophilic. That even in case of epichlorohydrin also, there might be some compound where the SN2 substitution might be taking place at the carbon to which halogen is attached, right? But that will not be a major product. But in this case, maybe there's a 50-50% um, product or it might be that the major product is the one where the carbon bromine substitution is taking place because the epoxidation cannot happen later on right so that might be the reason behind it so uh, anyway so what we'll do is now we'll attack simple carbon over here right so that's why it is important for us to see the substrate what kind of substrate is given to us now it is clear to you for epichlorohydrin derivatives like we saw for OTS also epoxide attached to OTS the previous question that we did and then we saw for the epichlorohydrin derivative also in the same question for part A that in those cases always the attack is taking place on the epoxide but this is the case where the attack is not taking place on the epoxide because once the attack takes place this O- that is formed it cannot attack this carbon because it will lead to a formation of 4 membered ring which is kinetically and thermodynamically not favorable okay anyway so once that attack takes place what do we get so 1 2 uh, second carbon Okay, first carbon, second, first carbon, second carbon, and then we have the um, so there are one, two carbons, right? One, two, and then we have the epoxide over here. Okay, and then we have the diethyl over here. Okay, and now what you are going to do? You are add, again adding HCl2. You can see in the question, we are again adding HCl2. So on, again adding HCl2, what we'll get? This will convert into an aldehyde. Okay, so this will convert into an aldehyde. So one, two, and then we have the epoxide. Okay, and this will convert into an aldehyde. So this is going to be product. So if you look at the options, uh, the correct answer would be option number one. Right. So this is the way you have to do it. You can see a question like I said in June 2019 examination also, which is very similar to this question. Right. And uh, you can practice it out. In case you have any doubts, you can let me know in the comment section. All right. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I'm very sorry for the audio. I cannot help it. Um, I tried to fix the camera, but it is somehow it is not you know recording with the microphone right so there is some issue with the mic um, so very sorry for that anyway i hope you like this video um, in case you did please give this video a big thumbs up and also do not forget to subscribe to my channel it just keeps me motivated right thank you and uh, i'll see you in the next video